Een doodnormale dag in onze hoofdstad, Amsterdam. Maar een bijzondere dag voor mijzelf en heel veel anderen. 1 juli. En hopelijk na het zien van dit filmpje ook het besef dat het jou aangaat. De geschiedenis van de Nederlandse slavernij. Samen met drie rappers krijg ik een korte maar bijzondere tour door Amsterdam. Stafford heeft Surinaamse roots en wil meer weten over zijn achtergrond. Aquasi is geboren uit Ghanese ouders. Hij staat bekend om zijn conscious rap teksten. Dit is een wedstrijd. Dit is een wedstrijd. En Lange Frans heeft zich vaker kritisch uitgesproken over de manier waarop Nederland omgaat met haar slavernijverleden. Ook hij is van de partij. Kom uit het land van rood, wit, blauw en de gouden leeuw. Plunderen de wereld, noemen het de gouden eeuw. Hallo, ik ben blij dat jullie erbij zijn, boys. Yes. En deze vrouw is een bijzondere vrouw. Zij gaat ons de geschiedenis vertellen hier zo in onze hoofdstad. Jennifer Taj van de Black Heritage Tours. I'll say some of it's difficult to hear. Some of it's difficult to see. How you fit all of these black bodies in here. You can't even like imagine. Jennifer, why do we start the tour here? Um, we're going to explore the images around the city that really reflect um, not just the black history, but the black presence, and how it all connects to the colonial story. So this is a really important location. And then the World War II monument, even in the monument, there is a black presence and a history that is often not told and talked about. And that's really why this is an important location. Can you show us? Yes, so the World War II monument was erected uh, to commemorate uh, the liberation uh, from uh, Germans uh, in uh, 1945. And if you look really closely at the images where they're showing bondage and uh, uh, of people being persecuted, more so on the image on the right, the black body is used a lot to depict not just slavery, but also power, uh, status and conquest. So we're going to really look uh, beyond just uh, the monuments and see exactly what are their meaning, why were they put there and what does it represent voor ons vandaag. Ik schrik er nu eigenlijk al van dat dit letterlijk de eerste keer is dat ik naar het monument kijk en dat de uh, shack is yeah. opvallen. Is yeah. me eigenlijk tot niet, niet op, jullie ook niet? Nee, nee, nee. Ja. Dit zijn zwarte bladzijden. Niemand is er trots op, dus mensen willen het dan ook een beetje achterhouden. Dus je moet het niet te weten. Dat... Ja, ja. Het is ook heel belangrijk dat het Frans zegt, maar het staat niet in de geschiedenisboeken, want ze zijn zelf misschien ook trots op zijn. Ja. Het is echt marketing. Bizar hè? Ik heb hier best wel een paar keer in ieder gestaan. Ja. And how we, we know that they're, they're, the African images were always exaggerated. If you look at the, the, the carving on the right, you can really see the, the full lips, the, the body features, that when they want to make it really clear that these are representing Africans. And we'll see wow. more of these buildings when we walk around the dam. Wow. Bizar, hè? Dat je het dus als je eigen interesse dat niet opwakkert, je het gewoon niet krijgt. Nee. Krijg het niet. Mijn ouders hebben mij geleerd van dat stukje ruilhandel, dat betekent dat is gewoon slavernij in één woord. Ja. En dat was dan ruilhandel. Ja. Dat was leuk. Ja, dat was even... We gingen ruilen, maar dat, we gingen niet ruilen. Dat was ja. so, mijn vader gaf mij uh, boeken van het Suriname en daar stonden wel veel dingen. Maar het was heel kinderlijk geschreven. Ik was misschien ja. acht of tien of zo, denk ik. En dan, in een hele kinderachtige manier wordt het helemaal uitgelegd hoe dan wat ruilhandel is. Zeg maar, is. We're gonna stop right here. This is what makes this city like a museum itself. There's all these images that we pass by every day mm -hmm. and really don't really look at them or see them and why are they there. This uh, location of the gable stone of St. Nicholas, St. Sinterklaas, but if you look closely, you don't see black peat in it. And so the history of St. Nicholas goes much further back than black peat. Black peat was created in the, in the 19th century. This building was actually named St. Nicholas House. And St. Nicholas was the saint of children and sailors. Mm -hmm. And if you see the three little children in the barrel, the dead. legend of St. Nicholas really started with uh, these children were, were either murdered or going to be murdered by the innkeeper. Mm -hmm. And St. Nicholas came and resurrected them. That's the legend of St. Nicholas. And much later, of course, then it becomes a story of yes. St. Nicholas with his black servant, who wasn't even named Pete when he was first created. He had no name. He was just his servant, mm -hmm. who he also, by 
by legend had rescued from being enslaved and forever to say thank you, he becomes his servant. And the legend evolves into this tradition of today, which mm -hmm. is that he comes down the sim chimney and that's why he's black. Yeah. But most people don't understand that it comes with a history that's connected really to the period of slavery. Yeah. And in 1850, slavery was still going on for another 15 years in, uh, in the Dutch uh, colonies. Ze zei het heel mooi. De city is like a museum. De stad is eigenlijk ook een... Ik voel me nu ook een beetje toerist in eigen stad. Nu leer ik foto's maken van dit. Boven de ABN AMRO hier. En ook nog het monument. Ik heb het nog nooit gezien. Ik ben dan geboren en getogen Amsterdam. En ik schaam me dat ik dit nog niet eens weet. En dat is bruut. Er wordt zoveel verzwegen. Maar het mooiste is wel... Ik denk wel Sinterklaas hangt echt aan de zijde draad. Het is nog nooit zo... Another a really important, when people are looking at this and they think, well, okay, there is a bigger history. And I talk about how during the time when Sinterklaas and the Black Pete story was was created, mm -hmm. there was also this image of the blackface that was in other parts of Europe yeah. and in the U.S. We had it Black Sambo, and there was a show, the minstrel shows that came from the U.S. actually also performed here in the Concertgebouw. Well, don't you get a job and go to work? When the man said, boy, you give me a situation, you'd have to put me through a simple SAP examination. No, stupid. You mean a civil service examination. So, here we are on the back side of the palace. But the building was originally built as the town hall, 1648. 1648 was a really important year in Dutch history. It was also the end of the 80 years of war. The Dutch became a sovereign nation and they wanted symbols that really represented their expansion into the colonial global world. So you look really closely, the symbols really tell the story. The very top is the atlas representing the world is on our shoulders. And the way Europeans thought of themselves during this period was like the center of the world. Look down, you'll see the top of a ship in the carving. You see, oh, behind yeah. the woman, um, the, the, Frau, the, the woman, Maria Frau. the arms yeah. stretched out, yeah. represents the town version of Amsterdam. You see images that represent all each continent that the Dutch oh, colonial world. Your camel, the Arab with the turban. Mm -hmm. uh, Look again, you see the, to the far right, the indigenous people, the Native Americans with the headdress. Oh yeah. Oh, Even oh, to yeah. the far right, you see monkeys, but look where you see the one Native Americans holding a green thing, that's a tobacco pipe. Yeah, yeah. So the products even that were produced in the colonies is represented there. Look to the left, you see a lion, the African woman holding the lion's oh, head. Wow. And you see, and see, you, feel yeah. me, you see the little boy Elephant. with a parrot in his hands, an African boy, they, they assuming that that is her son. Was this also the place where um, the, the rules when it comes to what to do with a slave were uh, decided upon? Good question. The Society of Suriname, mm -hmm. which was the organization that was developed with the city of Amsterdam as one of the owners, the uh, Dutch West India Company that had been established in 1621, and the wealth wealthiest man in Amsterdam, artist Cornelius van Solmoosdijk, all invested a lot of money, millions of florin guilders, to become the owners of Suriname as a colony. And inside the town hall, their chamber where they met to discuss the business of the slave trade was right here in this building. How old was you when you thought, wait a minute, volgens mij is er meer aan het verhaal van mij en mijn voorouders. Ik heb het niet aan Nederland te danken dat ik meer weet eigenlijk. Ik heb het meer te danken aan muziek en aan boeken. Ik luisterde eerst naar een groep die de hele tijd optrad met een vlag, met een rood, zwart, groene vlag. Red, black and green. Een groep heet Dead Press. En vanuit Dead Press zeiden zij ook altijd van... Uh, ze hadden het over Marcus Garvey en over Selassie. Ik denk van, hey, wie is Marcus Garvey? Ja. Opzoeken. Kom je een boek, kom je achter boeken en denk van, wow, ja. dit is interessant. Red, black, green, dit is interessant. Pan-Africanism, ja. dit is ja. interessant. We're looking at this building here on the Outer Zeiss Vorburg Wall. And this area is where uh, a lot of sailors lived. It's also, of course, now the red light district. But if you look at the building on the side, you see African men sitting there and they're holding a product, tobacco. The black bodies were used to, as like a sign. People didn't always, uh, couldn't really read and write. And so they used these images to tell you what the building yeah, yeah. was used for. 
This was owner of the building was a tobacco plantation owner in Berbice, so which is present day Guyana. Mm -hmm. And you see the African image used to hold the products. The, the, they would hoist uh, the, the barrel, bales of tobacco inside the building where they stored it as a warehouse. Mm -hmm. So in this area, even with the, the black presence of their bodies, was, was a symbol. And why was the black body a symbol of labor? Because during the 17th century, of course, that was how they saw us. So when we talk about race and the, the, the denial that race exists in the Netherlands, when you look at the monuments and the national, uh, the, the canal house buildings, yeah. where it was built into the structure, they're yeah. using race as to a build a nation. To build a nation. nation. Exactly. Yeah. It's hard to deny it when you see it built yeah. into the building in the 17th century. Yeah. It's hard to say that it doesn't exist when it was created right in this time period, in this location. So we need to live there right now. We could well. <laughs> yeah, that must actually well. If I this so see, and I've yeah. heard often or longer gehoord that uh, een aantal panden zijn gebouwd over de ruggen van slaven. Mm -hmm. En dat er ook nog geen reparaties zijn geweest. Dus dat de oude slaven-eigenaren geld hebben gekregen vanaf 1863. Ja. En de slaven helemaal niet. Dan denk ik van jou, jij, jij, of ik, of jij, of jij. Ja. Zou op een gegeven moment wel een huis moeten claimen hier. Ik ga daar wel voor. Ik moet straks op de Herengracht gaan wonen. Ik begreep het. Ja. ja, ik moet daar straks in gaan wonen. Ja. En laten zien. Ga ik op mezelf ook daar bovenop bouwen en laten zien van ja, yeah, fuck yeah, niet 1663, 1988. Ja. Weet je, om te laten zien, dit ben ik. Ja. Yeah, it's now just someone's house. Yeah. Someone's house. Ja. Yeah. And I sometimes the buildings I are. I want to know if they know. No, they did no, not. That's what she just said. The, the people that live no. in. No, they didn't know until they start seeing. Why are we standing? I mean, I come with lots of groups yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What, what is what's what is this building significant? And right next, uh, two a few doors down, yeah. with the is now the Grand Hotel. A five-star hotel, but in the 17th century, this was the first headquarters of the Dutch West India Company. So these buildings are now new institutions, or they're they're part of the culture of today. Built with slave money. Built with slave money. Slave hands. With at least built with yeah. the the idea of slavery benefiting a society. So you may not say directly. We don't always know that that money came from the colonies, but clearly they're say, making a, a, a statement that they're they're building wealth on the on obviously on the backs of others absolutely yeah, I don't really understand because what can i do with this information right? well no, knowledge you, is yeah, power knowledge is you power, know that definitely. I want us to go to the last location because okay. I think that will make it come together more clearly. Waar komt bij jou de interesse vandaan? Nou, ik heb altijd het idee gehad dat er veel gelogen wordt in geschiedenisboeken. Dus vaak uh, degene die het opschrijft, die kan de waarheid naar zijn hand zetten. En uh, er zijn echt nog wel een uh, aantal uh, pagina's in de Nederlandse geschiedenis die volgens mij wat uh, eerlijker herschreven zouden kunnen worden. Neem de panelen op de gouden koets en ik denk dat we hier ook op de tour veel dingen tegen gaan komen. Waarvan ik denk van ja, weet je, dan moeten we toch eens uh, anders naar gaan kijken. Want dat gebeurt nog steeds niet. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. Oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure. So, the last location, this street was a women's convent where n nuns lived, okay. the Helestraat, in the 16th century. And this gable stone shows us how they use religion to justify enslaving people. But it was a lie, because look closely, Acts 8, verse 37 38 tells a story about the Ethiopians, so the first really in recorded history that shows an African being Christianized, baptized. But the story is not about a slave man. The Ethiopian, who didn't, wasn't given a name, was actually a high-ranking public official who reported to the Queen of Ethiopia. But to put a collar around the carving the, gives you the impression that it is a slave. But if you know the truth, it's actually, he is an important royal figure. He was second in command to the Queen. And in the Bible, it talks about Philip, who was a disciple of Christ, who was instructed by God to go and preach about Jesus to this African man. Rembrandt himself painted the scene of the Moor Ethiopian being baptized by Philip, a disciple of Christ.
And in the story, he teaches this African who he says, do you know what you're reading? He's reading the Old Testament. And the African responds, how can I know unless someone teaches me? So in the story that's refer referred to there, he's talking about Jesus dying on the cross for the sins of the world. And then they get into a chariot together and appear water, so you see the symbol of water. And he says, here's water, what prevents me from being baptized? He says, if you believe in Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then you can too be saved. So he gets baptized. This is one of the first recordings of an African being uh, Christianized. Now the Pope, if you think about how the Catholic Church used these kinds of stories, a similar story like this, and it. flipped it. Mm -hmm. If you see him, oh, he was a slave. Of course, in, let's Christianize, we need to save the souls. But this man was royalty. So when you turn history and who produces this knowledge? Yeah. Who tells us what is the truth or a lie? It's up to us to free our minds with okay, that. Okay, now I understand. You tell a lie every time and repeat it every time. It People would leave it. It becomes yeah. the truth. Yeah. Until what we're doing now is we are deconstructing yeah. the, the history. In the Netherlands, slavery was not allowed legally. They didn't want slavery, the institution, to exist here in the Netherlands. However, that meant that if you were of African descent and you reached the Netherlands, however you got here, as an enslaved person on a ship or you came on your own, you were considered free. But what does freedom mean? Free to do what? The, uh, the, the history tells us, well, they worked in, as sailors on ships, not far from here, they would go to the Dutch West East India Company to try to get back to Africa, some people. They also worked in, as servants in the houses. We know that for sure. But now new research that is being revealed says there were actual communities. The history tells us there was no community of blacks. There was a black person there. There was a few people over there. There were no connections. But now we are learning that there were free black people who actually were a network they were baptized in the old church. So slavery, slavery was not allowed in Holland? Yes. But, but we have the society, we have our boats and all that kind of stuff, so we're going to keep this area called the Netherlands clean, mm -hmm. but we're going to do whatever the fuck we want outside. But was it so I clean? They might have been free while they were here, yeah. but the records also show that as soon as they left, they were yeah. slaves again. Yeah. yeah. Als wij onszelf voorhouden en dan wij, de Nederlanders, onszelf voorhouden van... Hé, hey, maar hier in um, Nederland was yeah, yeah. het een veilige yeah. free zone. The, dan is er dus eigenlijk mindset. niets om maar over te praten. Maar geschiedenis dat ook mee in Suriname of op de Antillen? Well, they don't really. They nee. learn it. The, they, their books are the books that were given to them by the Dutch. Yeah. So, that, of course, I went into the Maroon Village while I was in Suriname. In a school. And the books they're using are so old. That only tell the story of the Europeans coming to civilize. Yeah. The Surinamese people. Yeah, in the down. Today, the yeah. books that are that are reading now, in the in the interior, that's what they say. So that's why it's so important that we have to understand not just one side of the history, but, but the, all, all of it. Yeah. Because it does change your identity when you realize my ancestors helped build this empire, and I can't. Not, anyone not going to tell me anymore that I didn't matter. Yeah. I mattered because I mattered enough for you to put me on a building in the 1600s, the building that's still standing. So how can you tell me I don't matter? How can you tell me I don't belong? I'm an outsider, I'm all octone. Well, what, does what does that mean? Who decides? Who wrote that? I'm claiming, I'm reclaiming what was mine, what was taken from me. That's what this means to me. It's just yeah. the knowledge. Not just the knowledge, because that just knowledge changes the way I move through the world. It empowers it you. It empowers me. And it tells me I can tell my children a different story than the one that, that has been always told, the one-sided story. There's more to it. It's much deeper. And then you go into the museums, that's another institution of this history and it continues there. So it's not just on the buildings, it's in the museums, it's on the monuments, it's everywhere. Oh, freedom. Oh. Free.
het super tof dat jullie erbij zijn. Want ik, ik, ik weet niet, het voelt bijna alsof we nieuwe informatie van onze hoofdstad, van ons land, onze eigen geschiedenis, met z'n allen kunnen uh, dragen. Dus ik vind dat wel echt uh, heel tof. We hebben nou ja, verschillende dingen gezien. Um, wat, wat vind je van wat je tot nu toe hebt gehoord? Schokkerend eigenlijk een beetje. Sommige dingen dat ik denk van wow, ik, ik tel hier, ik, lo, ik woon hier ik, en ik weet het niet. Ja. Gewoon en, en ik weet niet of het net gezegd was, maar dat, dat is een familie zijn die nog steeds geld krijgen vanuit, van vroeger, van de slavernij. Ik denk van wow, wow, hoe kan ja. het? Want het weet ik man, het is ja. een beetje krom allemaal. Zo. Ja. Maar wel goed om te weten. Lange jij? Ja, uh, je gaat anders kijken naar uh, wat we gezien hebben. Ik denk nu dat als er aan de achterkant van de dam loopt, dat mensen jullie nog niet weten. Dan ga ik ook wel eventjes die plaatjes aanwijzen. Luister, dit is het idee en die driehoek en zo. Het staat er toch allemaal uh, goed in. En ik heb in het land van ooit gezegd van uh, uh, plunderen de wereld, noemen het de Gouden Eeuw. Ja, dat, dat wordt eigenlijk alleen nog maar sterker. En um, het feit dat we het in de geschiedenisboeken gewoon ook echt de Gouden Eeuw durven te noemen. Dat ja. is dat, en nog steeds het getuigt van veel lef. Balken en een paar jaar geleden nog in een, een of andere speech zei hij, daar zijn toen ook wel een aantal mensen over gevallen. Maar uh, van mij betreft het kabinet daarom kunnen vallen. Zodat hij zei, ja we moeten terug naar die VOC mentaliteit. Ja, uh, hey. ja. Maar dan voel je je zeg maar, als, als, als mens gewoon zo niet uh, vertegenwoordigd door de mensen die het zogenaamd de Duitsers hadden. Ja. Ja. Quasi, je had het er net al over van die bewustwording kwam bij jou vandaan. Je luistert naar uh, bepaalde teksten, je leest boeken en je denkt van huh, dat wil ik. En ik wil weten waar dat over gaat, je zoekt het op. Maar er zijn voldoende mensen die het daarbij laten. Wat zou je tegen hun zeggen? Ik zou, uh, kijk je kan niet nieuws of... Uh... Zwarte blad zijn, wat mensen sowieso al niet helemaal over eens zijn, door mensen een strot te houden. Ja. Je kan het wel op een andere manier brengen. Ik denk heel erg, ik word er best wel verdrietig. En, want ik ben een trotse Amsterdam. Ik ben super trots, ik hou van deze stad. Amsterdam is ook een soort van wereldstad. Iedereen kent het over de hele wereld. Door de stereotype beelden van Amsterdam. Maar er zit ook meer daaronder. En ik vind het een beetje gek om, uh, om het dan hierbij te laten. Ik denk dat je. Het, ik denk dat je als kind vind je het leuk om bijvoorbeeld een gehaktbal te eten. Maar je broccoli laat je altijd een beetje staan. Dat, dat eet je dan. Ik denk dat je het gezamenlijk moet doen. Dan moet je ervoor zorgen dat je stampot, broccoli... Top ja, stampot. Dat, 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 je moet het inderdaad, zoals Frans zegt, ja. moet het blenden. Ja. En dan gaan mensen het lusten. Jongens, ik ga jullie bedanken, man. Ja. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ik vond het, uh, dit wordt een hele lange brassa. Ik vond het super tof dat jullie mee zijn gekomen. Dat yes. is heel belangrijk. Het maakt het verhaal makkelijker om te vertellen. Nee.